All right, so we're going to have a look at some applications of circular functions. So these are our sine cosine graphs that we want to have a look at in terms of some worded problems. So in particular, we're going to be looking at the sine and cosine graphs. These can be used actually quite regularly to model some real world applications. So we're in producing sound, we might want to change how the sound waves are working. So that's one application. There's a lot of natural patterns. So for example, tidal patterns that as the day goes on, the water goes up and down and up and down. Um, similar to daylight at the beginning of the year, we're right in the middle of summer. Our days are really long and then they drop down in winter and then they go back up again as we get to summer. Okay, so that's daylight and then situations involving circles. So if I was to put a tracker on my bike and I was to go for a ride, that pattern there, that up and down motion would create circular graph as well. So we're going to start with a tidal example. So we've got a floating dock on the coast that measures a depth of the water below it. Okay, so the depth follows this equation here. Okay. Where t is the time after midnight. So we've got vertical translation, we've got a change in period, and we have a change in amplitude. So we've got quite a few transformations happening. And this is modeling where t is the time after midnight. So we've got a couple of questions asking us for the depth at various times. How long does it take for it to get back to the same depth? So how long is it for a full cycle? We want to sketch that and then use that graph to make some estimations, but then confirm those with the CAS. So the first one we're going to do using this equation, find the depth of the water at midnight. Well, t is the time after midnight. So at midnight, that means time is equal to zero, okay? Because midnight, we are exactly at the start, so t is equal to zero. So if I put zero in for the t, d of zero, well, that's 2.4 of cos i of zero on eight, plus the 7.2, but really, zero times anything is just zero, so that's just cos of zero, and you could use your calculator and plug that in, but we know cos of zero starts up high at one. So cos of zero is one, giving us that it starts at a depth of 9.6 meters. So that's basically as deep as it goes. And then the next question, we're asked for eight hours later. Okay, so what is the depth of the water at 8 a.m.? So how many hours after midnight? Well, that's eight hours later. So that means that t is equal to 8. So I want to put 8 in for my t. So I get pi over 8 times 8. Well, that's nice that I made that number cancel out nicely. So I just end up with cos of pi. Again, thinking about our basic graph, that's at 0 and 2 pi. It's at its absolute minimum at pi. So cos is equal to negative 1 at that point. So we're at our minimum at 4.8 meters. So we had our maximum at 9.6 and our minimum at 9.8. So those are two key points that we're going to be using. And then the last one's just a little bit trickier. What is the depth of the water at 2.40 a.m.? Well, that's two hours and 40 out of 60 hours. So that's two hours and two-thirds of an hour. So that's two and two-thirds. We don't really like working with mixed numbers, so that's eight-thirds. Okay, so 240 is eight-thirds of an hour after midnight. Okay, so two hours, 40 over 60, reduces to give us eight-thirds. So I'm going to put eight-thirds in for my t. Again, Nice. The eights reduce, so I end up with just pi on um, pi on three. Think about your special triangles. That's equal to a half. And then simplifying that, again, you could just do it in one step. Putting that in the calculator, you get that it's at 8.4 meters. So it started at 9.6 at 240. It's down to 8.4, and then going right down to its minimum at 4.8 after eight hours. So that's just kind of playing around with the equation a little bit, getting a feel for where it's going up and down. Now, part B, how many hours is a full tidal cycle? So basically, how long does it take to go from being at its deepest, 
how long does that take to get back to being at that same point? Okay. So really, we're thinking about our circular functions. This is actually just asking, what's the period? Remember, our period is 2 pi over n. In this case, our n is pi on 8. Okay. So I end up with 2 pi over pi on 8. Dividing by a fraction, well, I can think about that as multiplying by 8 over pi. Again, the pi's cancel out. I end up with 2 times 8, or 16. Always good to make a conclusion. So there's 8 hours for a full, sorry, 16 hours for a full cycle. And we could have probably estimated that because when I asked at 8, it was at its min. So that does mean that after 16 hours, it would get back. So that's just investigating a little bit, playing around with some values. Okay, now I want to sketch the graph. So again, have a quick think. See if you can figure out, well, we just did that the period is 16. Take a moment, tell me what's the amplitude, what's the median, so hence what is the minimum and the maximum. So take a moment and have a think about that. So our amplitude, well, that's the number that sits out front. That's our A. So that's going to be 2.4. So it goes up and down by 2.4. The median, well, that's our vertical translation. So that's 7.2. If my median is 7.2 and I'm going up and down by 2.4, well, that's going to make my min 4.8 because seven point. 2 minus 2.4 is 4.8, and my max, adding those two together, is 9.6. Okay, so I've got all the key information that I need to draw my graph here. Remember that if my period is 16, okay, and I take 16, so if I go from 0 to 16, if I chop that in half, that's 8, and then in half again, I get 4 and 12. So my key features are going to happen at 0, 4, 8, 12, and 16. So the first thing I'm going to put on is my median. So at 7.2, that's essentially my new x-axis. Okay. From there, I'm going to go ahead and start plotting my key values. So remember, because this is cos, the basic shape is that guy. So it starts up at the max at 9.6. And then the next key value is going to happen at 4. Well, then it gets back to its median. Then at 8, it gets to its minimum of 4.8. At 12, back to its median. And then finally 16, back up to its maximum. And then it's a matter of joining this with a nice, smooth curve. Okay. So again, figuring out the period, using that to break it into the four pieces, four uh, components of the graph, so each of the quadrants max and min, and we're good to go from there. So now that I've got this graph, we're actually going to use it to make some predictions. So instead of using the calculator to solve some equations, um, we're going to use the graph. It's something a little bit different to what we've done before. So I've got my graph. We want to use the graph to estimate when the water is 5 meters deep and 8 meters deep for the first time. So again, this axis is time in hours, whereas this axis is the depth in meters. So I'm looking for when my graph is at 5 meters. So when does it hit there for the first time? So if I go across, starting at 5, I go straight across until I hit the graph, and then I look at when, for what t value or x value does that happen? Well, it's pretty darn close to 7. So let's maybe estimate for 5 meters at maybe 6.45 and anything kind of in that range. Um, and that's what we're looking for because so this would be 7, that's 6, that would be 6.5, and, and it's hot after 6.30, so some estimate in that range is good. Okay, whereas 8 meters... That's going to be a little bit sooner. So if I go across until I hit the graph from 8, and then I drop straight down, 
Then this is three right here. It's just a little bit after three. So we're eight meters. Maybe 3.15 a.m., slightly after 3 a.m. Again, we wouldn't be too fussed. We're pretty flexible because we are going from a graph. We can't be um, absolutely precise. Okay? But we can, however, use the CAS to help us solve these equations, um, and we can get an exact answer. Okay? So our last part to this is use the CAS to confirm part D. So essentially solve the equation, y is equal to 2.4 cos of y t over 8. So we want to solve for t. Okay. And we're going to use our calculator to do that. It's a little bit interesting. It gives us um, the general solution. Um, so that's just something to have a little bit of a think about that we do want to be able to interpret this little fun thing that the CAS gives us. So let's plug this into the calculator. Okay, so here I've typed it into the CAS, so solving 5 is equal to 2.4 times cos of pi times t over 8 plus 7.2. And remember, you always have to put that comma and the variable that you're solving for. So let's, let's see what happens when we press enter. Oops. Okay, so I get this crazy looking thing when I press enter. What this is, is the general solution. So this n1 and this n1 here, those are essentially representing integers. So if you put the number 1, 2, 0, negative 1, negative 2 in for that number there, um, that will give you the answer. Okay, so looking at this one, this is essentially the the second solution. So if I was to put, say, 0 in there, that would be 1 times something, sorry, 16 times something negative. So I would get a negative time. If I put 1 in there, I would get um, essentially the next iteration of that. So this isn't actually going to be the first time it happens. So what we can do is just use your arrow keys and arrow over to see the second solution. So this is actually going to be our first solution, because if I put 0 in here, I get 16 times something that's quite small. Okay, so that will be my first solution. So what you can do, hold down the shift button, and then use your arrow keys to highlight that there, and then press enter and it will copy it down. Now you can delete the n plus 1. So you've just got 16 times, and it's like you're putting 0 in there. So this is, again, using the general solution. When I press enter, I end up with 6.95, so something pretty close to 7. Again, thinking back to what we had when we were using it from the graph, we said about 6.45. So it was after 6.40, 6.30, but before 7, and that's, that's exactly what we've confirmed here. So this is before 7 o'clock, so again, we might maybe estimate around 7 a.m. And we can repeat the process, but this time solving for 8. So again, shortcut, arrow, arrow, arrow up. Once you've got something you want, press enter and it copies it down. Now all I have to do is change that to an 8, press enter, and again it gives me a general solution. So same deal as last time, if I plug in 0 here, that's going to give me a negative answer. If I put 1 in, it will give me the second solution. So I'm actually going to copy this second one, so again press up, arrow, arrow, shift, So again, pressing shift, arrowing over, and then pressing enter to copy it down, and then essentially making that zero. You can, you can just get rid of it or make it zero. It's the same thing. And pressing enter, I get something a little bit past three. And that was what we extrapolated from the graph as well, or interpolated, was that when we went across, it was somewhere around 3 a.m., slightly after 3 o'clock. So this does confirm what we had um, in our graphs. So we can use a calculator, it gives us the general solution, so we do need to be able to plug in particular integers and it will give us all of the answers. So that's the basic idea of that depth question, so we have the tide moving in a cosine type pattern, um, we can use that to make predictions as well. So we'll do a separate video for the next question, which will be about a Ferris wheel.